Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Crystal, just in case you are new here, and today let's talk about vampire books. Two of Jay Kristoff's beautiful book, Empire of the Vampire, that was released this week as I film this. Um, I am very very early on but I'm loving this book so much and it's just kind of bringing back that love that I have for vampires I have always always been drawn to that monster ever since watching Buffy the Vampire Slayer as a very young kid I just have been obsessed with vampire lore and I just want to read all the books about vampires especially now there were so many during my teens that popped up we had Twilight we had Vampire Academy we've had so many YA vampire versions Ugh. Vampire Diaries, all of that. Um, so I have a few recommendations here for you guys that I just personally own. And because there is so many vampire books out there, a lot of people don't know how many vampire books are out there. So I'm here to recommend them to you for the spooky season if you're looking for some vampire books. Another book I'd like to recommend like to recommend to you which is kind of in the same vein as what I was just saying before and that is Interview with a Vampire by Anne Rice. Um, this is the kind of like beginning, um, this is kind of like what Jay Kristoff was inspired by I would say about his new book. Uh, this is an Interview with a Vampire, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie, with Tom Cruise and Brad Pitt. Kind of like a very slow build not very action inspired novel and I think Jay Kristoff kind of took the idea of this and then kind of put action to it if you know what I mean. That's what I'm getting from his new book Empire of the Vampire. Like this is a, a start of a series as well. There's so many books in this Anne Rice series so if you're interested in reading a very slow moving um, character driven type of vampire book check this out. Then I have three books here that kind of go together a little bit. So I'm going to start off with Dracula by Bram Stoker. This is the classic. This is the start of my love of vampires. This is what inspired it all. It's just an amazing book. Uh, it's very slow, but I will say it re reads like a classic. It is a classic. So if you are not in the mood for that very slow writing and very flowery writing and not much action happening but it's just so much character um don't pick it up because it's very daunting uh, i would say the first half of this is a lot more exciting than the last half of it uh but i really do love dracula this is a great story and i recommend watching uh the bram stoker uh dracula movie as well if you don't feel like picking up the book watch the movie then I have a prequel to Dracula, and this is written by Bram Stoker's um, great-great-grandson, I believe, and J.D. Barker, and they came up with this amazing story. This is such a great prequel to Dracula. So much more information has been kind of explained about Dracula and how the, the vampire lore has came to be. Bram Stoker's great-great-grandson, he came across a lot of Bram's journals and things like that that he got to reading and he learned a lot more about what Bram wanted to put into his story Dracula. So he took a lot of that and he put it into this book because editors and publishers back in the day when Bram was was publishing his novel they did not want him to publish some of that stuff and they edited a lot of things out because during that time that's when Jack the Ripper was just running amok <laughs> everywhere and killing people and they didn't want to freak people out even more uh, so there was a lot of things that were part of the Dracula tale that were taken out and now Dacker Stoker put it into this book. So check it out if you love vampire lore and you want to know more. Uh, this was one of my favorite books of the year two years ago and I can't wait to revisit this. I don't know if I'm going to have time this year but I really want to re pick this up and reread it because I had a great time reading it. It was thrilling, exciting, and super gothic. And then I have here going with like an after effect and that is The Historian by Elizabeth Kostova, which I actually recommended in my last um, spooky recommendations video, my autumn recommendations video. Uh, this is 
after Bram Stoker's Dracula. Now we're following a historian who is in a university uh, studying Bram Stoker's works and trying to discover our vampire are vampires real? And there are, is evidence, there is scientific evidence that vampires are real. And this guy wants to get to the bottom of it, but because he starts to find out all this information, uh, he goes missing. And then his daughter starts looking for him um, and trying to figure out what happened to her father during this journey of discovering all this information about, you know, Bram Stoker being right, that there are vampires and that Dracula was a true tale uh this is a really exciting book it's it is pretty thrilling but it's very thick and it and it is very literary so it does take a little while to get through but i had a great time reading this there is an abridged version of this so if you're interested in reading like a shorter version uh check it out but i i really don't suggest it i think you should read the whole thing if you are a huge fan of dracula because this was really like a deep dive into vampire lore and it really had me questioning are vampires real and then i have a favorite here which is a little of a different take on vampires and that is the southern book club's guide to slaying vampires by grady hendrix now this book is hilarious gory freaky <laughs> and everything that I didn't imagine it to be but it was better than that. I highly recommend this book if you're someone who is new to the horror genre who needs a little bit of that comic relief while reading horror just to kind of get rid of the tension um, and that fear factor. I really really enjoyed this book so much and it is definitely a different take on vampires and vampires aren't specifically present throughout this entire book but you just have that lurking feeling the entire time and weird supernatural things are happening. Um, and this takes place in the, like the late 80s, early 90s, I believe. And it's about a woman's book club. And these women are reading books that they don't want their husbands to know that they're reading. So they're saying they're, you know, reading these rom romance books and things like that. But they're actually reading true crime, uh, like Anne Rule, things like that. Um, and they're just kind of a little paranoid from reading those books but it's also opening up their eyes to like these freaky things that are happening in their town as well and it's making them realize like something is not right here and we need to get to the bottom of it and that leads to um someone new coming to town who you know says that they are related to somebody that they've known for a long time but they've never really met this person before uh and something just seems off so by them incorporating what they're learning from reading these books into what's happening in their town is helping them solve the mystery of what's going on and you know bodies are turning up and things like that so it's a really fun book takes place in suburban mom life and in the 90s and i just really enjoyed this so much uh super nostalgic that's what i love about grady hendrix and also his comic relief along with the horror contents which don't get me wrong are very horrific and they're pretty gross uh sometimes but he just knows how to relieve that fear factor and i just really love his books for that i have this ya book and that is mina and the undead uh this is actually not out yet in the u.s i did order it from book depository because i keep hearing people talk about it and i needed to have it uh this is being pitched as uh, like a southern um, gothic vampire tale similar to Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Um, it does take place in the 90s and it takes place in New Orleans. It sounds really spooky and gothic and all the things that I really enjoy in a vampire novel. Plus it's YA so it's going to be a breeze to read. So this is one that I have not picked up yet myself but I'm recommending it to you because it sounds like something I'm going to enjoy and if I enjoy it I know you guys are going to enjoy it. I really love this cover. It's very similar to um, Grady Hendrix's um, My Best Friend's Exorcism, where it kind of looks like a VHS tape. Uh, and you have like a little, you know, it looks like a real sticker, but it's not. Um, so I'm going to read the back a little bit to you so you know what it's about. Uh, it says New Orleans Fang Fest 1995. Mina's having a summer to die for. So that kind of re really reminds me of Buffy the Vampire Slayer because I don't know if anybody's seen it, but there was Slayer Fest and that was just a like hilarious but also kind of scary episode. Um, 
So this says, Mina arrives in New Orleans to visit her estranged sister, Libby. She loves nothing more than a creepy horror movie and can't wait to explore the city's darkest secrets, vampire towns, seedy bars, spooky cemeteries, disturbing local myths. Sounds like me. <laughs> Mina lands a part-time job at a horror movie mansion and meets Jared, Libby's gorgeous housemate and fellow horror enthusiast. But the perfect summer bliss is broken when she stumbles upon the body of a girl with puncture marks on her neck, clutching a lock of her hair that suspiciously resembles Libby's. Someone is someone is replicating New Orleans's most brutal supernatural killings. Mina must discover the truth and prove her sister's innocence before she becomes the victim of another myth. A fun romp through 90s pop culture, vampires, Buffy, The Crow, need I say more? And that was blurbed by Dawn Kurtiga, who I love dearly. Check this out, because I am probably going to be reading this alongside Empire of the Vampire. The next I'd like to recommend another one that I haven't read yet, and that is The Beautiful by Renee Adier. This also takes place in New Orleans, and this is a, I want to say it's going to be a three-part series. The third book might be coming out in December, from what I hear. I have been wanting to get to this series for so long. I heard the first book isn't so great, and you don't really see vampires till the very end, but it does have that lurking gothic feel that I'm looking for in a book, so I'm hoping to pick this up at some point before... Halloween is over at least so I can get the first book done but I've heard nothing but great things about this series as time goes on more and more people are loving it so I'm finally getting around to picking it up. Next I have here A Discovery of Witches which <laughs> uh, has witches and it also has vampires in it so if you're looking for more of a, a literary fantasy love story type book that involves vampires. I would say this is like an adult twilight in a way. Uh, definitely pick this up. Uh, I really enjoy how they do vampires here and you get a lot of, a lot of historical fiction in here as well. So you, there's that time loop where you go back in time and you see, um, our, one of our main characters who is a vampire, you see his life before all everything that's been happening and I really enjoy that so a discovery of witches so much fun and also has a main character named Diana who is a descendant of the Salem witch trials which I really enjoy so you see a lot of um, history there um, from the Bodleian library and you hear a lot about this the the witch trials and um, about this book Ashmole 792 or something like that Ashmole uh, it's like it's a it's it's an alchemical manuscript that has been missing for centuries that that is now missing um, and it holds a lot of information, important information that should not be out in the open. So a witch and a vampire team together and try to get this shit back and it's really good. It's really good. So definitely check it out. It is written by a historian, De Deborah Harkness. She is a historian. She is a um, professor at a very prestigious school. So. Check it out if you like history, if you like witches, and you like vampires. Next I have here from Blood and Ash, and this is by Jennifer L. Armatrout. Really enjoyed this. This is about smutty vampires. Uh, definitely takes a little bit to get there. This is a very large, large book. Being reading some romance, because I really don't read smutty romance at all, uh, but I'm really enjoying reading it from this point of view, from this type of world. Uh, yeah, and everybody's loving this series, right? Everybody loves this. Like, I feel like everyone across the board loves this. There's nothing bad about this series. It's just, it's it's hot and steamy, and it's vampires, and great. It's awesome. So, uh, definitely recommend this. <laughs> the next I have, of course, Salem's Lot by Stephen King, which I've talked so many times about this on my channel. So, if you want to check it out, check it out for yourself. It is Dracula Comes to America, as I always say. So much fun to read. I revisit this every year. I am in the middle of a reread of it actually as we speak and I love it all over again. It's the perfect spooky fall atmospheric read. So if you're looking for something with all those things plus vampires, check it out. Uh, it takes place in, a, in Maine, New England. So you get all those beautiful fall vibes that painted picture and it's take it takes place during now so it starts september 5th all the way into october so if you're looking for something that really takes place in this time of year check this out then lastly i have here let the right one in and this is by john a 
I can't even say this last name, uh, but this has been made into a movie. I want to say this is a Nordic, is it Nordic or Swedish author? Swedish. So this is like a, uh, a Swedish author who wrote this book uh, and it was translated. But it is a coming of age story about a vampire. But our main character is a, a kid who makes friends with this like weird person girl next door and he just starts to unravel pieces of this murder mystery that happened in his town uh, so it's kind of like an it presence if you know what I mean like definitely that coming of age feel but also it involves vampires and it's super creepy and super scary I'll say I don't know much about this because I have not read it myself here's another one that I have not read myself but I will be picking this up um, this season because I've been dying to read this Literally. 12-year-old <laughs> Oscar is obsessed by the murder that's taken place in his neighborhood. Then he meets the new girl from next door. She's a bit weird though, and she only comes out at night. So this synopsis is very vague. Anyone that I know that's read it, that I've seen videos on booktube, they're very vague about it. So I really want to know what it's about. And like I said, I've heard great things. So on top of these recommendations, of course I will recommend Vampire Academy and Twilight and all of those fun vampire books that we had growing up. Uh, watch Va Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the movie and the TV show, watch Angel, watch Vampire Diaries, the originals, get into all of that if you're looking for gothic vampire TV shows to watch and just to like... I don't know, enjoy the 90s a little bit, early 2000s a little bit, you know? But I've been feeling really nostalgic lately about what I read and what I watch on TV. Uh, the 90s was just such a more simpler time in life, you know? And even the early 2000s, it, life was just so much more simple. So watching TV shows from that time of my life is kind of just helping get through all the tough times that we're facing today. Yeah, that is it. That's all I have for my vampire recommendations for you guys. And let me know in the comments down below if you have any vampire book recommendations for me as well. I would love to know. Make sure you like and subscribe to my channel down below. Let me know what you are reading for the spooky season. And on that note, I will see you all in my next video. Stay spooky, friends. Bye! I'm dead when I sleep, you're